Okay guys, welcome to practical two where you are going to determine the dissociation constant or Ka of an unknown weak acid. I'm quickly going to go through the apparatus and equipment that we'll be using for this experiment. So here we have our seven indicators. We have methyl yellow, methyl red, methyl orange, thymol blue, bromophenol blue, bromothymol blue, and bromocrystal green. On this side, we have a 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, a 0.1 molar solution of our hydrochloric acid, distilled water, our unknown weak acid, and as always, it's good to have a waste beaker. We also have our combo plates here. You can see that it, they have little wells in them. We'll be using one at a time with our pipettes, and this is a drop controller. Okay, so for the first part of the experiment, we are going to use wells A1 to A7. So if you look on the combo plate, you'll see it's labeled A down to F on the side there. So in wells A1 to A7, we add 10 drops of our hydrochloric acid. So to make sure that we add it drop-wise, we're going to use a drop controller. Okay. So we take our hydrochloric acid, okay, suck some of the hydrochloric acid up into the pipette, then you fit the drop controller, and basically what happens is, as you tighten the drop controller, it's going to slightly put a force on the pipette, so you're going to be able to measure one drop at a time. Okay, so 10 drops of each of hydrochloric acid in wells A1 to A7. Okay, so we have 10 drops of our hydrochloric acid in wells A1 to A7. So now we're going to add two drops of each indicator to each well. So we're going to start A1 on this side to A7 on this side. So I'll just turn around so that it makes more sense. We're going to start with methyl yellow, just one drop. Methyl red in well two. Methyl orange. Thymol blue. Bromophenol blue. Bromothymol blue. and bromocrystal green. Okay. So these are the colors of um, our indicators in acidic solution. So I'm going to repeat the same process uh, in wells B1 to B7, but with our basic uh, sodium hydroxide instead. After adding the base, I'm going to add the indicators again in the same order. So first methyl yellow. Methyl red. Methyl orange.
time up, please. Primer final, please. Primer thymol, please. And primer crystal green. So what you can see now is the um, colors of the indicators in both acid and basic solutions. Okay, so we're gonna put that aside for now. We need this for color comparison again in um, a bit later. We're going to move to um, experiment two, where we are going to do the exact same thing, except with our unknown weak acid. So we're going to add 10 drops of our unknown weak acid in wells A1 to A7, and then add a drop of each indicator as we did previously. And we add our indicators again in the same order, so starting with our methyl yellow. Methyl red. Methyl orange. Thymol blue, bromophenol blue, and bromothymol blue. Bromo crystal green. So what we need to do now is we need to choose two indicators that are going to help us assist uh, help assist us in the determination of the pH of our unknown acid, which is this one here. Okay, so I've stacked combo plate two with our unknown weak acid on top of combo plate one, where we have our sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid with our seven different indicators. So what we need to do now is we need to choose two indicators that are going to help us in a, um, we're going to choose two indicators to help determine the pH of the solutions. So if we look here, wells five, six, and seven, you can see that the color at the top of our unknown acid does not match at all with the combination of the indicator in an acid and base. So we look now to wells one to four. Well four, the color on top is a nice little peach color. It does not match with the color at the bottom. We move over to well three. We've got a nice orangey red color at the top that matches almost perfectly with that at the bottom. So we can say for now that the indicator in, um, vial in well three, which is our methyl orange, we could use for the next experiment. If we look at our um, well two, we have a nice bright pink at the top, whereas at the bottom we have more of a peach pink. So the colors don't match, so we can't use that indicator either. We look finally at well one, which is our methyl yellow, and we can see we've got a nice peach color at the top and a nice peach color at the bottom. Now, the peach color at the bottom is a little bit more um, of a bright color, but we're not too worried about that. What we're worried about is the hue of the color. So the hue of the color on the top well matches that of the bottom. So we can say that the indicators that we're going to use for experiment three are going to be from well A1, which is our methyl yellow, and well A3, which is our methyl orange. We're moving on to experiment three. So we're going to make uh, two sets of pH standards using our acid. Okay, so 
we first add 20 drops of our 0.1 molar acid into well one. So I'm using the big well so this can be seen easier. Okay, so that's 20. And then we are going to take two drops from our first well and empty them into our second well. Okay, we can put the rest back to our first well. So we've got two drops of our 0.1 molar HCl in here. And we're going to add 18 drops of water. Okay, so we have now made a 10 times dilution in here. So what we're going to do is clean our propet. And now take two drops of our dilute solution in well A2 and transfer them to well 3. Okay, this can go back. And we're going to top up with 18 drops of water. So now we've diluted this one 10 times. We rinse out our propet. And again, take two drops. and add it to the next wall. And we add 18 drops of water. With the clean propet, We're going to take two drops from this well and transfer them and add 18 drops of water. Okay, so now we have made five pH standards, pH 1 to pH 5. We're going to then take half of the solution in these wells and put them in the wells just behind them, using a clean pipette every time. So now we have about an equal amount of pH solutions 1 to 5 
In our front row, we are going to add our first indicator, methyl yellow. And in our back row, we are going to add our second indicator, methyl orange, which we determined in experiment two. So now we have the color of both of our chosen indicators in a range of pH from pH 1 to 5. So what we're going to do is use combo plate number 2, have a look at the colors of our methyl yellow and methyl orange, so the weak acid in our two indicators, and we're going to compare those colors to our pH standards in order to estimate the pH of our weak acid. Okay, so in this combo plate over here, we have our weak acid with the seven different indicators. Remember, we chose methyl yellow and methyl orange. In this combo plate here, we have our pH standards, pH 1 to pH 5 of methyl yellow and methyl orange. Now, in order to estimate your pH of your unknown acid, we're going to look where this color in while A1 matches best with these five over here. So if we move it over, we can see it's an orange, but it falls possibly between there and there. So we could say it's either pH 3 or pH 2.5 because it's between pH 2 and between pH 3. We do the same thing with our methyl orange, which is here, pH 1 to pH 5. And we bring the color over and we try and see where best this color here matches with our pH standards. And if we look carefully, it matches quite well with pH 2. Again, it could be somewhere between pH 2 and pH 3. So again, we can estimate a pH of 2.5. Now, knowing the estimated pH in both of our indicators, we can then calculate our dissociation constant.